Ooh, bad focus. Hey guys, never done live before, so we'll see how this goes. Wondering if I can lock that focus. At least it's focusing on my face, such as it is. Anyway, trying this uh, YouTube live for the first time. Not going to stay on here long. Just figured I'd, uh, oh, look, I got a few viewers. Nice. Ramona, how are you? Like I said, this is all new to me, guys, so it's kind of, I'm trying to figure it all out. I've done Facebook Live before. <laughs> well, shaver. Hot dog. All right. So, anyway, figured I'd jump on here and give it a shot. Let's see, I can never tell if my eyes are out of focus or if the camera is. See if it'll lock. Let's see. Trinity, Christine. How are you guys? So anyway, we uh, I did the drawing yesterday. Totally forgot about the video. Got wrapped up in some stuff. And evidently, I can't lock the focus. So New Zealand. Hey, how are you? Good deal. So I did the random drawing thing. Uh... We had just about 200 people sign up for the free soap giveaway. Focus, focus. And uh, it was, we did to, we, see, can't talk. This is why we have editing. But I do this in my edited videos too. See, you say I'm fine in focus. For me on my screen, it's zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. And part of it's because I talk with my hands. But uh, anyway. Went to random.org, put in the number of people who requested the free soap. The drawing came up to number 25, who is Peter Barry. So Peter Barry, shoot me an email if you're watching this and uh, give me your uh, address and your info so I can send you your soap. Yeah, we, uh, so we're phasing this out, our, uh, our double thick bars. And we're going with the uh, burly bars, which I don't have any in front of me. I'm totally unprepared. But uh, so I figured let's do a giveaway. Why not? And uh, we may do another one. We'll see how things go this week. Uh, but we did Enlightenment. Pipe Smoke. Always a good one. And Gravity. Three of our better smelling scents for me, I think. But I like them all. It's like ask me which is my favorite kid. So Peter Barry. I'll shoot you an email too, and uh, let's get your address so I can mail you some soap. Anyway, guys, uh, while we're on here, anybody got any questions for me? Anything about the shop? Figure while we're on here doing this live thing, we'd check it out and see what's up. Pardon me, my addiction. Eighteen. Okay, I didn't think I'd get anybody this time of day. Appreciate y'all hopping on here with me. Yeah, sorry about that. I tend to do that. I'll, I'll do a, a random little video that, and announce we're going to do a giveaway. And I usually give it about 24 hours or so. And then I close it out and do the drawing. So yesterday afternoon, I closed the shop just after 5 o'clock. And as soon as I closed the doors, in fact, I haven't even locked up today. What time is it? Oh, it's not even 5 o'clock yet. So... Uh, so yeah, you might actually get to see a customer, but anyway, uh, as soon as I locked the doors, I did the drawing and, uh, yeah, came up with Mr. Barry. So what y'all got for me? Yup. Hit the bell to get notifications. You are absolutely right. If you want to see some more videos and we'll be doing more giveaways, go ahead and hit that bell icon. So it'll notify you when I do a video, when I do uploads and things like that. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's a small shop, about 300, about 350 square feet interior. Uh, take out 25 square feet for the bathroom in the corner, and that's it. That's all we got. So we make everything here, and uh, plus it's our retail. Let's see if I can take you on a little look around without messing things up. Actually. So there's our shop. Zoomed in pretty tight. This is my view when I'm standing in my workspace. 
Got our bath accessories over there. Some beard stuff. Traditional wet shave stuff. Accessories. Like I said, it's small, but I like it. Our little register area. It's quaint. So far, there's, there's enough space for us to do what we got to do. Some more wet shave stuff. That's right, bud. Just the right size. We do what we got to do, including stacking boxes behind the register. <laughs> we got things stacked everywhere. Some days it looks like a bomb went off in here. So. Ta-da. Best advice for a new soaper that is soaping for fun. Uh, whether you're doing it for fun. Hold on, let me get rid of this fan. Sounds like a jet airplane taking off. Switzerland, nice. So, whether you're doing it for fun or for a business, thank you. Um, really, it all kind of applies. You know, enjoy yourself. Don't be afraid to experiment. I feel like this again. Yeah. Anyway, don't be afraid to experiment. <laughs> Good deal. And um, just really learn learn your measurements first so that you get everything in your base right. You know, your, your lie to water ratio to oils and things like that. And then just go nuts. Try different things. You never know what's going to work. Uh, don't get caught up. Thank you. Philippines, nice. Don't get caught up in the, um, you know, you have to do it this way. You know, there's so many people out there that will tell you there's only one way to do soap. There's only, you know, three different types of oils you can use or fats. And most of it just isn't true. <laughs> Mr. Gilming, how are you? Oh, shoot, I missed that one. Have I ever made a fancy soap? I think is what I saw. You know... About as fancy as I get is uh, occasionally we'll do some colored swirls in our soaps. I don't get too into the detailed stuff. So uh, we partnered. I'm going to take you on a little walk about here. We partnered with the Worcester County Developmental Center, Worcester County, Maryland, here where I'm from. They, whoop, they employ... Uh, Disabled adults give them gainful employment, and they make a certain kind of soap, uh, glycerin soaps, and uh, really cool. So they pour the shapes, then they pour the uh, the base, and they kind of combine them, and then they pour the clear tops. And the green base is actually seaweed that they um, that they harvest from the surf. A little crab one. They harvest them from the surf, seaweed that is, and... They've learned how to clean it, dry it, pulverize it, and uh, makes that cool color. And like I said, it gives them employment. Sea turtle. So I thought it was really cool and something that I didn't really think I would have the patience for. So I figured, you know, maybe it'll be a good thing for them. A good thing for us to have something different for people to choose from. Oh, that lighting got way worse, didn't it? All right. So, yeah. And then uh, back to the other thing, you know, making soap for yourself or for a business. How about if I block out the door? There we go. Uh, just have fun with it, you know. Don't, don't get too caught up in hard and fast rules. Some of these soaps are made to look at. Well, these soaps that I just showed you are for both. But for me, I'm more of a utilitarian guy, you know. Um, you know, I make like these shampoo bars. I make these little round puck shampoo bars and uh, un unbleached coffee. Whoa, look at that label. Unbleached coffee filters and uh, just a stick on label to keep it closed. And that works. Uh, I do want people to use our stuff. You know, I don't want it just to sit on grandma's vanity next to her sink or in the guest bathroom. I want people to actually use these and benefit from them and enjoy the scents. So it's kind of where we're at with that. What you guys got? 
Well, I'll ramble a little more while somebody types. So yeah, don't get caught up in all the, you know, I call them soap Nazis, kind of like soup Nazis, but uh, don't don't get caught up in too much of that stuff. You know, while there are some rules that you don't necessarily want to break, there are some that are forgiving enough that you'd be fine doing a little experimentation. Diversity, yep. Well, thank you, Margaret. So, yeah. Um, I'm always messing with different things. Um, we're getting ready to try sodium lactate this, uh, this week coming up in a product and see if it helps things a little bit. Sometimes, uh, you can always watch. Thank you much. Favorite oils to soap with. For, for regular bath soap, excuse me. For regular bath soap, I tend to like olive oil, coconut oil, sustainably sourced palm. So I know people freak out about palm oil, but there are places, and it's getting to the point where you can only buy from these places soon. Uh, you won't be able to buy the stuff where nobody knows where it came from and if they clear cut forest for it and all that stuff. So there's new programs that are being put in place to keep farmers from clear cutting forest land to get more palm oil. Nice. Yeah, I use it as a shampoo on my beard. So uh, let's see. Olive oil, coconut oil, palm, soy wax. If you can find a good soy wax that does not have the additives for, you know, certain candle types, um, you got to read. You got to go into the product description and look at the MSDS sheet and it'll tell you what kind of additives are in it. Um, basically, soy wax, pure soy wax, is a hydrogenated soybean oil. That's all it is. Um, and so I like using that in soap. And honestly, canola oil works great in soap. It, in, some, in some ways, it acts almost identical to olive oil in soap. Um, and it is a cheaper alternative. Uh, I don't get into the... GMO debates and things like that. I haven't seen enough evidence out there to support most of the uh, the fear mongering, let's call it, that people get into about different oils and genetically modified and things like that. So until I start seeing real hardcore scientific proof, uh, most of those oils are fine. Uh, even, you know, people even say pesticides and this and that, you know, Organic doesn't mean no pesticides, but anyway, that's a conversation for another, for another video. Oops. Almost broke my neck. Stuff on the floor, see? Absolute favorite scent. Hey, Colorado. Ah, oh, man, that's like asking which kid's my favorite. I'll tell you the most popular and has been for the last two years is uh, pipe smoke. That has been one of our most popular scents to date in bath soap, shave soap, and beard stuff. Uh, it's kind of a fresh caramelized pipe tobacco scent with a little cherry and vanilla mixed in. It's, it's a good one. Uh, I sell more of that in bath soap to women than guys, believe it or not. So that's, in it. that's definitely in my top five. You know, I like the pipe smoke, the gravity, enlightenment, uh, fougere. I mean, I like them all for different reasons. Uh, I'm not too much of a seasonal guy. I'll use whatever, whenever I, the mood hits me. Ooh, you can see back here in this tray, somebody requested, somebody bought one of our new Burley bars recently, and they, they put in the comment box, they asked if we could start making uh, Beachberry Burley bars. Well, that's Beachberry Burley bars right there. So whoever requested that, they're coming. They'll be on the site this week. And... Uh, we're probably going to add at least one more scent, mint and eucalyptus, and I'm not sure after that, but we'll we'll find out. Anything else, guys? If I'm going to do any more of these live ones, I almost need like a separate monitor so that I can see the comments. <laughs> The super chat, the way it's set up on here, the comment flashes up and just about the time I focus, hey from Louisiana, 
uh, just about the time I get to focus and read what it's saying, it kind of fades into the distance. And there's probably something I can do to make it stay up better, but who knows. Very cool. So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Our little shop, our little paradise in Berlin, Maryland, here on the Eastern Shore. I have been soaping gravity. Yeah, gravity is a good one. I've been soaping almost seven years. Uh, started just for us at home. My wife found a laundry soap recipe online, and uh, we were we were hurting a little bit financially then. Uh, and she asked me to make this recipe of laundry soap, which was a liquid recipe. Hated it. Hello, Michigan. And uh, so I started tinkering around with the powdered portion of the formula, figuring, well, it's all going to dissolve in the water anyway. Why not? So I came up with the proportions that I liked. Hey, Mr. Davidson. And uh, she started using it, liked it. About six weeks after she started using my version of the uh, laundry soap, uh, she asked if we could make bath soap. She asked if I could make bath soap. I've been a carpenter most of my life. I knew nothing about making soap. So I was like, sure. Yeah, let's make bath soap. So I had to start studying up real quick. Started out with YouTube videos, of course. Uh, found a couple online books. Lots and lots of forums. Um... This first month or so was a little nerve-wracking. Hey, Abe. Was a little nerve-wracking. We started with uh, olive oil and coconut oil and uh, hot process. And again, I got all wrapped up in all the rules of soap making. And, uh, you know, keeping the white vinegar on hand and things like that. Hey, Anthony. And... Uh, so, you know, once I started getting past some of the initial fears of working with the lye and, you know, temperatures and things like that, I, I got pretty comfortable. I would say after a couple months, I went strictly cold process. So, excuse me. It was faster, easier. I know, I need to get her in. She's a little shy with the video camera, so I tend to... Uh, not push too hard and actually i'm getting ready to lose megan as a helper here not all the time she'll be able to help on the weekends and stuff and some evenings but uh she's going to take over my wife's business so this school year coming up so about another month and uh uncle john is flying solo in here so we'll see how that goes with making things running the shop mailing things it's going to get kind of wild and wooly for a while Nice. Very cool. Well, congrats on launching your business. Again, just remember to breathe. You're going to have ups and downs and good months and slow months. It still happens. Uh, you know, I got to say our, our store and our website are doing better each year incrementally, but uh, sorry, I got distracted. People walk produce and, you know, something happens. I get distracted or we get busy in the shop and can't make things a certain day. Oh, well, I'm by fire. Shaving time. Okay, let me answer the shaving time one first and then the uh, essential oil fragrance oil. So shaving time has not, blurry again, has not contacted me. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'd be more than happy to supply them, but uh, Mr. Dave has not gotten in touch with me. So um, we do not do farmer's markets right now. We started out doing farm markets and craft shows on the side when I had my day job. And then three years ago, we opened this brick and mortar shop and I went almost totally here. Every once in a while, I'll cherry pick a show. If they really, really want me there, I'll try to set up for it. Favorite beard balm. Well, with the warmer weather, heck, any of them, but uh, custom bar. I would do a custom batch for somebody. I would try that. I would try a custom batch of soap. So you would have to commit to a whole log, which is 24 bars. It's not available on the website as an option right now. 
Um, but if you shoot me an email at unclejohnsoap at gmail.com, uh, we can talk about it. I'm always willing to play around with something. And if it's something popular or something that I like, we may even make it a permanent product. Essential oils and fragrance oils. Best oil for beard oil? Any oil that you don't mind putting in your beard. Uh, that's another thing. You know, I see some of these other companies and they get all wrapped up in argon oil, emu oil, this is the oil and that oil. Sorry for the flailing. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not that important as long as it's an oil that's not going to go rancid in your beard. And if you're, you know, like I don't use soap and shampoo in my beard every day. Um, I use a, I don't even have one here. I use a shampoo brush, which is a hard plastic bristle brush with the hot water from the sh shower. And unless I've been sweating or eating barbecue, that cleans the hair just fine. Um, but as long as the oil is not going to go rancid in your beard um, or in the bottle, and most oils will go rancid over time. So just keep it in a dark bottle, out of sunlight, all that, and you should be fine. Uh, sunflower oil makes a great beard oil and it's inexpensive. Uh, back to essential oils and fragrance oils. I like both. In the beginning, I thought that I needed to go all essential oils and stay 100% natural. But, you know, after looking at the way they get some of their oils, Yeah, Castile oil does lather more than people think. Um, you know, I thought I had to stay 100% natural, but then when you look at the way some of those oils are distilled, hey, it's only going to get so natural. Steam distillation is probably the most natural and uh, impressing, uh, but some scents you can't get without chemical distillation. So, yeah, it is what it is. And the fragrance is such a small portion of the product that it really doesn't cause any more health issues than essential oils do. In fact, some essential oils people use way too much of. Tea tree oil and things like that can be very dangerous. So, uh, you know, citrus oils, even lemongrass can cause sun sensitivities. So, you know, do some studying up on the different essential oils and then look at the fragrance oils. As long as you get from a reputable source, the fragrance oils, I think you'll be fine. I am thinking about selling sh shaving brushes. Um, we have a couple people that make brushes for us who are working on some brushes for us right now with our logo on them. So uh, they'll be wooden handled, excuse me, wooden handled and synthetic knots. Uh, I'm kind of a synthetic guy. I like the natural bristle brushes, but uh, you know, I don't want to have to soak them most of the time. I just want to kind of wet and go. If you run a synthetic brush underwater, it's as wet as it's going to get. It's not going to soak in water. So what else you guys got? I feel like I missed somebody in there. I tried to catch y'all. <laughs> so yeah, I wouldn't get too caught up in fragrance versus essential oil either. Um, I know there are people who like to only use essential oils and that's cool for me. It was kind of limiting in some of the sense we could make. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. I'm glad they're still holding up. Yeah. The, the uh, I like, uh, I like all uh, shape brushes, you know, but like I said, the synthetic knots tend to be my thing. Uh, like here's one you can get on uh, Amazon, if you search haircut and shave company, it's a nice fat handle, nice big knot. I think it's a 28 or 30 millimeter knot and uh, nice backbone, nice soft tips, really great lathering. That's a, a tuxedo knot, by the way. Other people call it different things. I've seen people call them a couple different things. So So at home would like to start a business. Is it a hard process and how much to start up? Well, that's, I'm not sure. <laughs> so here's the wishy-washy thing. I started by making a few bars out of my house. So really the costs were making sure I had the, the, the materials to make the soap, you know, the raw materials, 
and uh, some equipment that I was not going to, like kitchen equipment, basic stuff, that was not going to be intermingled back into my kitchen. While most of it gets clean enough that I could use it for cooking, I just didn't want that hassle of back and forth. Thank you. I appreciate that. Onita or Oneida? Or have I totally butchered it? So, um, you know, you can hand stir your soap. You do not have to cook it. Um, but you can... I like cold process. It's simple. And once you get into it, it's very easy and forgiving, depending on the fragrance or essential oils you're using. Sometimes it'll seize up on you in the pot. But cost-wise, I mean, I started this shop on a shoestring budget. I think it was $2,200. Some used furniture, some shelving that I slapped together, and the first month's rent plus utilities. So, you know, it was very minimal, very sparse in here in the beginning. And uh, so nothing, nothing huge. To color my soaps, I saw that question. And I use, I use Crafter's Choice. It's, it's a quality color. Matte brown oxide pigment powder. So oxides and marine and ox, uh, ultramarines and things like that. Your startup was 15 grand? Holy cow. That's heavy duty. Wow. So, okay. I don't know how deep we can get into this because you're typing and I'm speaking. It's easier, easier for me, obviously. But now, what kind of equipment were we talking? You wanted everything you saw. <laughs> uh, most of those powders, the pigment powders, are naturally mined minerals that have been cleaned up in a lab. Some of them can be grown and reproduced in a lab. Uh, but most of them are natural minerals that have been cleaned up to get the heavy metals out of them so that they can be used in the cosmetics industry. Hope that answers your question. So 15 grand. All right, now are you doing milling and things like that? Because I've seen some small milling machines that go for like ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 that, you know, I thought about doing a triple milled soap, but milled soap is not what people think it is. A lot of soapers, when they first start out, sorry about that. A lot of soapers, when they first start out, think that milling is just grating your soap into really fine pieces and rebatching and trying to press it as hard as you can. And that's really not it. Soap cutter, soap mold, mica, hot process and cold process. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, I, now I've kept it simple. I, you know, I don't go for, I could use a nice soap cutter, like the tank kind of thing that cuts a bunch of bars at a time. Editing program, I'm just using uh, Windows Movie Maker right now. It was on the laptop and it was easy to use. For cutting my bars, I made this jig that clamps to the edge of the countertop here with a guitar string. Can't really hear it. But it, it comes off this tuner and then goes through this hole and comes out this hole. And it's set at 7 and an eighths inch off the deck here. So that when I stand the log of soap up and slide it through, it cuts a nice even bar. And I just, it only takes me a minute to cut a bar, a uh, log of soap. So, uh, I wish, wish I could tap on this and see. Oh, I can. On a fragrance oil bender and order way too much? Yes, I have. Uh, although I haven't gotten to the point where... I order anything more than a one pound bottle, maybe two of the same scent because I know we're going to use them. Uh, but there are some scents that I think I'm going to start going by uh, gallon jugs, uh, which I think on average is like a six or seven pound um, fragrance oil. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You laughing at my soap cutter, outlaw? Resale sites on Facebook for equipment or product? Fragrance oil bender. Well, I appreciate that. Let me bring that back up. If you think you're not ready to make soap yet, 
I think I think you're more ready than you think, Linda. I think uh, I think you can do a small batch. I wouldn't go too small. The smaller you go, the more complicated it seems. I wouldn't do anything less than a pound of soap, and uh, you know you'll you'll kind of know. It is practical, and I can make it myself. And I can probably make a multi-bar cutter. There's a company, a soap company. Oh, what is it? They're in a sugar mill in Hawaii. And their soap cutter is like a wooden frame, just a rectangular frame with legs that hold it up off the table surface. And it has a bunch of strings running across at the, the width they want them apart. They set the log on top and they use a block of wood, like a block of two by four, and just push the log right through the wires. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Pebbles. Thank you, Julie. Vanilla Spice Shave Soap. Steven, that's a good question. Right now, I think in shave soaps, I still want something that's kind of summerish. I think what we're going to do, and I don't know if you're in the shave group called It's Just Shaving. We did a shave soap. Excuse me. We did a shave soap. It's called Iceman Citrus Freeze. Yeah, Rebecca, I order from all those places too. So, this is... Mostly lime. It's lime with a little bit of orange, even though it's got a lemon on it, with a little bit of orange and menthol crystals. So I think the group has, has decided that I'm allowed to go ahead because we made it kind of as a group. So for Carl Kiefer, um, who has his own YouTube channel, check it out. He does head shaves and face shaves. But uh, I think we're going to redo this label so that Marvel Comics doesn't get up my butt about it and uh, then re-release it to the general public with the same, same soap formula. I missed something here. <laughs> I try to be no BS. Well, Steven, come on over to it's just shaving. We'll get you in there, man. It's a fun little group. Um, and I don't have to worry about, you know, trashing a, a half a batch of soap, trying to push it out of the PVC molds. And 